Funding for FAIR 2021 is brought to you by Friends, the Iowa PBS Foundation, and by... Since 1911, EMC Insurance has partnered with local independent insurance agents to provide protection to our customers. Headquartered in Des Moines, Iowa, EMC now serves policyholders through 20 locations across the country. Count on EMC. Caring for pigs is not just an individual job. It truly does take a village to put a safe, healthy food on your table and keep farming sustainable. Investing in a College Savings Iowa 529 account can give your future scholars financial support to pursue their educational dreams. They grow up fast. Learn more about planning for their tomorrow at collegesavingsiowa.com. Bill Riley, and I am so happy you've joined us again tonight. You know, if you think about it, the Iowa State Fair is the ultimate way to bring everyone together. Our stresses and our differences are set aside as we all share in our love and excitement for this huge event. If you've been out here already, let's relive the fun. If you can't make it out this year, well, that's okay too, because we'll bring the flavor of the fair right into your living room. Here's what's on the docket tonight. Oh, the majesty and talent of the cowgirl queen. We'll take a look-see at the competition. We'll put our thinking caps on for the plant identification contest. And these creatures are in no way ashamed of their recent weight gain. They're proudly stepping on the scales at the big animal competition. Let's start our coverage this evening with our friend Paul Yeager. He's scouting out the butter sculptures. 15 butter buckets down, a few more to go as the butter cow takes shape at the Iowa State Fair. Sarah Pratt's back again for another year. She has some new things. Let's go find out what they are inside the butter cooler. Hey, Sarah, did a year off, did you know what to do? I mean, are your fingers okay? Are your muscles all right? Yeah, we actually enjoyed a little bit of yard work last summer. Our yard usually looks horrible this time of year. So we were outside uh, digging in the garden and doing all kinds of things that, you know, kept us, kept us going. This year there's somebody watching you work. Who is this? Yes, this is Joe Lyon, um, Norma Duffy Lyon, the, my mentor and former sculptor of the Iowa State Fair Butter Cow, her husband. You know, the king of dairy, I don't know, I would say, um, from my perspective. But he was definitely a giant in the industry. He passed away this last January. And so um, I felt it was a fitting tribute to have him here with the butter cow because of his family's importance at the fair and certainly with the butter cow um, tradition, but also in dairy and promoting dairy. And, of course, this year's cow is going to be a jersey because of lion jerseys. Because that's what they have done. Now, is this actually Joe? This is actually Joe. Um, I'm not sure what circa this year is, but I'm going for like 1960 Joe. Um, as I looked through, that was kind of the beginning of the heyday when the, he and his brother Howard were really um, hitting the shows and, and get, gaining a lot of fame and notoriety in the dairy world. But it also was the first year that Norma sculpted the butter cow here at the fair um, as you know the full-time sculptor so it seemed like a fitting um, era to go with the fair skips a year but the girls did not the twins are helping uh, they're working on the accompanying sculpture which is the big slide this year why the slide well you know amazingly enough you'd think that it would be easy i had an extra year to think of what to do so we really struggled with what to do what to sculpt that would bring about a sense of joy and coming together um and so as we compiled a list of ideas the giant slide is turning 50. my two nieces millie and hazel are going to be modeling for the two children on the slide that are sharing their their uh, mat and then dean is going to be modeling as the 
um, the winner at the end of the slide, <laughs> who raced down and got there first. 2005, that was Norma's last year. The butter came in, all 14 buckets, moldy. That is the last time we replaced all the butter, 2005. It smells like new to me. I think that the butter has aged very well. We had very little um, mold or of any kind in the butter. And you've added new sections. We have added I mean, it's new. not like it's, it's all old, but there is new that gets mixed in. Absolutely. And the old butter actually sculpts better. So the cow, you can see, is a lighter color. It is the oldest butter and is the easiest to sculpt, the most like clay. The halter, Grace I just kind of accidentally created this out of the new butter. Um, but I love the contrast. And Joe is mostly new butter. So you see it's a brighter yellow color than the older butter. Here I am at the gates of Thrillville, tucked in between Ye Old Mill and the Grandstand. This is a great place for family fun. It's the home of all of those classic carnival rides that you grew up loving, plus a few new favorites, and of course, games as well. And we're gonna find out how sick I can get just riding classic carnival rides. Ready? <laughs> I don't think the steering wheel really works. <laughs> okay, here we go. riding rides now. <laughs> okay, I'm really glad I didn't eat before I went on that ride. If I were 14 years old, I would have loved that. <laughs> All right, come on, ducky, ducky. I didn't win a giant mama panda or any stuffed animals, and I did nearly lose my lunch, but the Ferris wheel is irresistible, and it's the perfect way to enjoy the Iowa State Fair. Young women that compete in the Cowgirl Queen contest, it's a dream of theirs that they work towards every year. So if they don't win, they come back. I know girls have shown from age 10 to 26, never won it, but they love doing it. When I was 
little, I always wanted to be the cowgirl queen, so I practiced like my whole entire life. These young ladies are coming from every corner of Iowa, and they're very good. The young girls tonight will compete in the Jacobson Exhibition Center, which is one of the largest arenas these girls will ever see. Indoor arena is a lot different than outdoor arena. There's a lot of sounds, echoes, the crowd clapping. There's a lot of distractions, so your horse has to be very well broke, and you have to be a very good rider. I've shown FFA and 4-H in the Jacobson for many years, and I just always love standing in the gate and taking in the scenery and the surround and so many people and the energy, and it's just an amazing feeling. Everybody's watching you, and just to go in there and enjoy a wonderful ride with your horse in a big arena like that is such an honor. The girls are sponsored by clubs to be able to compete. There's a junior category and a senior category. The ages for a junior is 10 to 15, senior is 16 to 26. And once you win a queen and junior, you can't compete in junior anymore, you have to wait till you're a senior. In each junior and senior queen category, there's gonna be three cuts or preliminary rounds. We'll be taking six entries from each cut to come back for the finals. That'll make us 18 in the finals. The juniors are the first to go, and then after the junior cowgirl queen is picked, then we'll start on to senior cowgirl queens. It means a lot to me being crowned in 2019 because I trained a lot of years to do this and I finally got it. I have to wait two years until I go into the senior because I'm not 16 yet and I'm going to come back and just keep trying until I get the senior title. I have advice is to not to be nervous and also just keep practicing. It's gonna come when it's the right time. There's three judges and there's an average score. So it's not just one judge, there's three judges. So they average the scores. So one judge can give you first, one judge can give you fifth, one give you third, and they average them together. That's how they're placed. We ask all of the ladies in the finals to give us the Cowgirl Queen salute. They'll come around that ring 100 miles an hour, they'll slide to a stop, and uh, it gets the crowd right on their feet. I did it. I just won queen. All throughout quarantine, just working hard with her, gaining more trust with her, and really showing it of my all. These young ladies have earned the right to be here. They have either won a contest at their local fair, at a horse show, so every one of these young ladies is a queen already in their own right. The rider that is so well versed and connects with her horse. It has a good seat, which means she sits back in the seat and she has to have balance. And she has to have leg control, spur control, hand control on the reins. There's a lot going on at one time. I've participated in the Cowgirl Queen contest for six years, including Junior Queen. And when I first got into Senior Queen, my first year, I was crowned Senior Queen. <laughs> I just really focused on the partnership between me and my horse and going out and taking in all the scenery and all the crowd and really enjoying the moment with my horse. Go out there and do it for you. Enjoy being dressed up. Enjoy the opportunity to do things like this and really get the youth engaged and show those little girls that they too one day can do something like this if they work really hard. It has taken so much time and effort, and I'm so lucky to have the supportive friends and family and barn that I have. And this has been such a bucket list event to come to. It's so worth it. Whatever your dreams are, just 
put in the time and the effort that it takes to achieve them because it's so worth it once you get to this point. <laughs>Everybody should go to a state fair in their life and wants to see what's going on. I got started sheep shearing because a fella mentioned how girls can't shear sheep, and so I thought it was a great idea to go ahead and get into it. It's my full-time job, so I shear other than this. The reason to do competitions is a great way to share what we're doing and how we are doing it. <laughs> The contest is judged on three different categories. They have time, second cuts in the wool. That's if you go over the same spot twice, so that makes the wool shorter and less valuable. And then the third thing is how the sheep looks at the end. You know, you want a nice smooth job with no scratches or anything on it. Perfectly clean, shorn sheep. It looks like a boiled egg. One person brought all the lambs in today. These are just lamps, they're gonna weigh about 80 pounds, 90 pounds, and we'll get into the big use that will probably weigh anywhere from 160 to 210. I think a lot of people have kind of some common misconceptions about shearing and the health benefits are actually for the sheep. And so it's kind of nice to be able to tell you guys that the sheep are being shorn for their health, not because we're trying to take their wool. They're going to be shorn either way. They usually don't seem to mind it too much. It's kind of like in the pen, you pull them out, shear them, and they're done in a few minutes, and it's over. The technique is your legs do all the work for you, just to hold it there. And then you have one free hand, and this hand has the clippers in it, so you, now you can only use one hand to hold on to the sheet. So it's really one, something you want to do. You'll have fun doing it, and you'll never, you always want to do it until you die. It's so much fun. I competed at the Iowa State Fair two years ago for the first time, and I competed in the intermediate, and unfortunately I won, so now I'm in the professional. <laughs> and so, should have a bit of free time after I get out. I've probably been coming here since about 2003, 4. It took me a while to get good, but I've probably won the State Fair eight out of the last 10 years. I think there's five contests now in the country that count for points for the U.S. team to represent the U.S. overseas in the World Championships. So I've done that four times, represented the U.S. at the World Champs. So the Shears here today are trying to get some points so they can qualify to represent the country. It's a good time to hang out and have some fun, and earn a little bit of money and mostly pride. Hi, it's Bill Riley, and I'm backstage at the Riley stage in preparation of the crowning of the 2021 Iowa State Fair Queen. And I'm thrilled to be standing with the, not just the 2019 Queen, but the 2020 Queen, the only Queen to reign for two years due to the pandemic. I'm with Hannah Kellner from Mahaska County and Eddyville, Iowa, so many great folks down in that neighborhood. Give us a little idea of what the young lady is going to expect when her name is called. Oh my goodness, Bill. She is going to experience just a change in her life. And it's, it's incredible actually hearing your name called, your county, 
and she doesn't even know what she's in for yet. Tell us a little, bit, a little bit about the camaraderie, and I mean, you're together for a brief amount of time, but the friendships that are developed through this wonderful pageant. So they developed so many friendships throughout this week of Queens Week, the County Fair of Queensville. Um, friendships that honestly last a lifetime. They'll meet college roommates, they'll meet friends that they meet up later in life, and then it's also nice to have the Iowa State Fair Queen sisterhood that you can come into once you're welcomed as the Iowa State Fair Queen. Hannah, thank you so much. Uh, we're excited to have you on stage tonight for your final goodbyes. I know it's going to be a little emotional, but we are so very proud of you. Thank you very much. And to Iowa, to you I say thank you. Thank you for the last two amazing years. Two years of my life that has shaped me and two years of my life that has left an imprint on my heart forever. It has been an honor to serve as your queen. wasn't that long ago you were sitting in the seat. Plymouth County McKenna Henrick. <laughs> Fallout girls, come congratulate your new queen. Wow, am I excited to be standing with the 2021 Iowa State Fair Queen. McKenna Henrick is with us. She hails from Plymouth County and uh, Akron, Iowa. <laughs> McKenna, thank you so much. What an evening. Tell us a little bit about your family. Right, so hi guys. Um, I'm from Akron. My parents are Brad and Michelle Henrich. My mom is an elementary principal and my dad works for a trucking company. McKenna Henrick. And your plans in school. Where are you at in school? Right, so I'm heading up to South Dakota State University. I'm gonna be a registered sophomore because I took college classes my senior year, but I'm gonna be a nursing student this next fall. And quite a history with the FFA program. Yeah, so I've been in FFA for five years. I was a chapter reporter for two years, chapter president for one year, and I was actually a district officer. I was a reporter. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2021 Iowa State Fair Queen, McKenna Henrick from Plymouth County. Give her another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Bill Riley. Thank you so much for attending the coronation of the 2021 Iowa State Fair Queen. Be safe tonight. Enjoy your Iowa State Fair. We're outside the agriculture building for this year's weed identification contest, where this year professionals and amateurs alike will try to guess 35 different weeds. Competitors will come out and they'll be challenged to identify, uh, like the youth division identifies 20 uh, fairly common plants, weeds to Iowa. Uh, the general division will have to identify 30, so the next 10 are a little bit harder. And then we have a professional division who identifies 35, and those last five weeds are meant to be complete stumpers if we can do it. <laughs> and it predates me by many, many years, and so I think it actually started in the 1980s when someone uh, thought it would be a good idea to try to identify weeds, and they challenged the weed scientist at Iowa State University to, to come up with a weeds contest for the fair, and it has been going ever since. And uh, I would say we have kind of a cult following, but we're always interested in getting new weed enthusiasts to come out and identify the plants. Even if I don't come and do it, I keep track of, you know, who, what was on it, or people will send me a list of what was on it. So I'm, I'm a regular. <laughs> I'd say maybe 20 or 25. I mean, I, there's some that I know right away as soon as I see it. And then there's others I'm like, uh, it's a grass. I don't know what kind though. And so then I just make a good guess on it. 
I've done this a, a number of times. Um, you know, I'm not a professional, so I don't do real well on it. One year, actually, I did get like 12th place, but uh, it's just a fun thing for me to do. You're not allowed to use any of your resources, but we are, uh, I, w I would say that we're, we're fairly lax, especially with like the youth division and the general division with regard to things like common names. Like, so for example, a common uh, weed that we have in Iowa is velvet leaf, uh, but we'll accept other names like butterprint and buttonweed because everybody seems to know some of these plants by different names. There's a, some I kind of looked at and say, I think I know that, but then I'm not really sure. Where do you see some of these weeds? Well, like on the farm. And when we go on rides to see if there's any volunteer corn or anything like that. I'm a farmer, um, and so you just come across a lot of different weeds in that. You see something in the field or the um, edge, you kind of need to know what it is. Well, I do a lot of prairie walks. I do, um, I'm involved with master gardeners and master conservationists. Oh, it's hard this year for me. I didn't do any studying. Um, so yeah, I know some of them. They're, I grew up on a farm, so I still know some weeds, but uh, I'm having a tough time this year. To my knowledge, nobody has ever gotten 100% in the professional division, so nobody's ever gotten all the weeds right. Uh, but we did have a really close call several years ago where I think somebody only missed one, and he's coming to compete this year, so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> If you'd like to see the weeds, find out a little more about them, and find out who the winners are, they'll be inside the agriculture building until the end of the fair. Walt Disney once said, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Hope some of you took the leap this year and entered a fair competition. Here are some results. Okay, my friends, I've got a little secret. The second half of our show is gonna be even more fun than the first half. The chainsaw carver is gonna have the wood chips a flying as he sculpts amazing art. Travis Graven will bring us baking brilliance from the bread pudding contest. And some hefty animals are gonna strut their stuff. We look forward to ushering you through all of this after a quick break right here on Iowa PBS. Hi, I'm Bill Riley. One of the most entertaining traditions at the Iowa State Fair is the Talent Championships. Iowa PBS will be there again this year to cover the magic, excitement, and fantastic talents of young Iowans from across our state. Prepare to be impressed. Tune in Sunday night at 8 for the Bill Riley Talent Championships, only on statewide Iowa PBS. Did you know that your Amazon orders could help Iowa PBS and support the programs you love? Just go to smile.amazon.com, select the Iowa PBS Foundation as your charity, and continue your shopping as usual. Start at smile.amazon.com every time you shop, and Amazon will donate a portion of your purchase price to support Iowa PBS. Eat it raw, steamed, or fried. Broccoli is king when it comes to versatility. I'm Charity Nebbe. On the next Iowa Ingredient, we'll find out how broccoli is grown in Iowa. From seed, it's 90 days to harvest. Then, Chef David Barusio of Baru 66 will tantalize our taste buds with some broccoli recipes. 
All that and more on the next Iowa Ingredient. Tune in or stream Thursday at 6.30 p.m. See more of Iowa PBS online. Follow Iowa PBS on Instagram. Connect with us on all our social networks at iowapbs.org slash social. Be a part of Iowa PBS's State Fair coverage this year by sharing your favorite pictures with us. Just tag your photos on social media with hashtag Iowa PBS Fair Photo. They'll be included in our fan gallery at iowapbs.org slash fair photos and highlighted on social media. Here's a look at the acts advancing after today's talent competition at the Riley stage. Be sure to tune in for the Talent Championships here on Iowa PBS, Sunday, August 22nd at 8 p.m. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Bill Riley. Hey, have you ever hung out at Pioneer Hall and heard a very distinctive song being played between events or acts? Not surprisingly, the song is called Pioneer Hall, and it's from an old radio program called Just Plain Bill. Well, it's summertime in Iowa, and there's excitement in the air. Cause summertime in Iowa means the Iowa State Fair. There's lots of things to see and do, but you ain't seen it all. Until you come and join the fun at Pioneer Hall. Now we're not going to forget our friends who aren't here with us today, who stood upon this very stage before you here and they played. They're playing now in a bigger band out there beyond the blue. They're lining up a show like you won't believe for us when we get out there too. Yes, it's all free. So you come and see and wonder back in time The heritage they left us It's yours and it's mine Look up on the faces That made our country great We're Americans all and we're standing tall In Pioneer Hall Yes, we're Americans all and we're standing tall in Pioneer Hall. The Iowa State Fair 2021 Big Ram Contest. We've got probably one of the biggest classes we've had. Uh, we got 11 entries this year. And so we're gonna go ahead and go over here to the scale and weigh them and see who comes out to be the biggest. Kyle Cook's Suffolk Ram Murph, five-year-old, weighs 355 pounds. Ram Millet, two-year-old, named Buddy, weighs 272 pounds. Mariah Geyser has a fall-born Ram Millet, weighs named Ace of Spades, weighs 254 and a half pounds. Fisher Farms brought us a Suffolk Ram uh, named Quick Shot weighs 418 pounds. And the biggest ram for 2021 is one of our Suffolk rams from Fisher Farms. 
weighs 418 pounds. I thought I was marginal. He could be bigger next year. Big Ram is a purebred Suffolk Ram. He's a, a breeding ram, uh, one of them that would could have been shown or probably was shown here in his younger days. And uh, he's what the Suffolk breed is kind of looking for, tall, long, and heavy made rams. We're ready to start our big boar show at the 2021 Iowa State Fair. Isn't it good to be back, folks? Absolutely. This boar's named Mickey. He's a four-year-old purebred spot. Mickey loves belly scratches and all kinds of treats. 856 pounds. His name is Cupid, how appropriate. He's four years of age. He was used as a herd sire on their small fair to finish operation. His favorite treats this summer have been sweet corn and watermelon. 1,056, 58 pounds. This entry is Brutus. He's a Chester White. You might, might remember him from two years ago. He was our reserve champion. But when he's awake, he likes his ears scratched and his back scratched. And he's learned to dance a little when you hold your fingers on his back. 1,258 pounds. So he is our reserve champion again. This boar is Irish Cowboy. He's been a stimulation boar all of his life. He looks good and smells good to the ladies. His name comes from his color and he's always been a loner, just plain and tough. And at this point in time, he's the heaviest one with 1288. I think the biggest thing these guys have got to do, they've got to have lots of length of body as well as width of body. You can't put weight on pigs, but by length, width, and depth. And this individual has it in all three categories and uh, they took care of him. He stayed cool this summer when they fed him lots, and that's the biggest reason that he gained as much as he did, and he's as big as he is. Irish Cowboy. Um, I grew up Irish. He's got an Irish hair coat. Sometimes I called him Irish, sometimes I called him Cowboy. This boy's always had an attitude, just one heck of an attitude. He's a loner. He reminds me of an old crusty cowboy out on the range. Good evening, everybody. We want to welcome you to the uh, 38th year of the Super Bowl contest. Hey! Porter weighed 2,654 pounds. Albert weighs 2,888 pounds. Little Bill weighs 3,040 pounds. My name is Randy Roberts, and I'm the organist at the Iowa State Fair Horse Show. My first uh, Iowa State Fair was in 1971, and I remember that because I had just graduated from college and was going to teach school up in Mallard. Uh, and so I think I've been there every year since, and it's just a fun time. I enjoy getting my contract in the mail and knowing that I'm going to be back there again. You know, the thing that I enjoy about the Iowa State Fair is you see a lot of the same people year after year. When, we, when I started playing, I was over in the pavilion, and I would see people, they'd always tend to sit in the same sections every year, you know, and I almost got to know them after, because a lot of these people will attend, you know, all 12 days of the fair, horse shows, and, uh, and they always stop by and say hi. I only play for horse shows. I travel all over the country. My, I've done shows on the West Coast. I do them in Arizona. I've been in Texas this year. I just came back from New Hampshire last week. So I kind of get all over the place, you know. 
Years ago, uh, my brother used to show horses in Iowa. I grew up in Northwest Iowa, and I was taking organ lessons, and uh, some friends of my parents were putting on a little one day, fun day type horse show, and wanted to know if I would bring the organ out and play for it. And I agreed to do it, and it just kind of went from there. I think they want to have some kind of background music of some kind, just so it's not dead all the time. And I really don't know if I play for the horses or if I play for the spectators or who I play for, but um, when I am playing, I like to try to um, have songs that will keep in the same gates or same tempo as what the horses are performing at, you know? So if they're trotting, I play a little faster than when they walk and I slow down and I do the canter music. And, to be real honest, I had three hernia surgeries while I was hauling the organ because I had a pickup that I would um, load the thing into, and so I had to get in the back of the pickup, bend down, lift it up, which is probably not the best for me, but um, that's what I did. And it got to the point where I needed a new truck to drive, and I thought, oh, gosh, I want to buy a new truck to keep doing this and, or whatever. So then I had this idea, maybe I should try a keyboard. And I knew I would give up a lot of sound quality because I had a Hammond B3, which is the top of the line organs as far as I was concerned. Um, but it, the convenience was so much better. And I, when I go to the West Coast, East Coast, wherever, I fly the keyboard uh, out there ahead of time. It, hopefully it meets me at the hotel. And uh, you know, I just plug into their sound system and away we go. So it's, I've been able to do more shows because I've gone to the keyboard. Probably the people, you know, that uh, either I work with or some of the exhibitors, we get to know each other because a lot of us go to the same shows, you know, and uh, we just have a, a fun time. It's just fun. So I think the people is what do it. I do enjoy the horses, but the people is really what keeps me going, I guess. Time to give the answer to our trivia question. We asked, during which war did Iowa troops muster into service at the Iowa State Fairgrounds? The Civil War, Spanish-American War, World War II, or the Korean War? The answer is the Spanish-American War. In 1898, four regiments of the Iowa National Guard assembled here at the State Fairgrounds for the Spanish-American War. They were volunteer soldiers, about 6,000 of them, and they camped in the animal barns and did drills in the grandstand area. They also ate pork and beans, but sadly, nothing on a stick. <laughs> Here's another look back, this time at the Iowa PBS Fair coverage from the 1990s. The 90s were a pretty darn good decade for Iowa public television, as we were known then. Okay, Laura is taking the camera out of the car. Hey, Laura, how are you? New technologies were making things easier than ever, and we really hit our stride covering the Iowa State Fair. Good evening and welcome to Fair 93. We're so glad you could be with us. And here he comes down to the ramp and up and oh. over. As always, we were there for all the action at the track. The purple number 12 car. Hepzel getting a little sideways. Sula and Jock from the outside. Father is going to beat son. And oh, man. Brings it up and over. We're using the 429 coverage. Yes, we're at the south end of the state fairgrounds, and that's down where the real action is. That's down the sheep barn. And from day one, Iowa PBS was in the livestock arenas the origin and heart of the Iowa State Fair. Pretty exciting moment, isn't it, for a young person? Yeah, it is. It's really a lot of fun to come down here and exhibit with all the different people from around the state. Singing in the rain. And what would a state fair be without fearlessness, destruction, and spectacles? And you can see nothing left of the chair, and Mike Davis really came rolling out of there. As Our own videographer, Jason Cooley, took one for the team and bungee jumped 
three times. So what I did was when I went up on the crane, I was supposed to hold the camera out and jump. Bungie! But when I jumped off, I guess my finger hit the button and it pushed into a tight shot, so it was all messed up. So the second time, they decided we'll put the bungee cords to my ankles. And when they look at the videotape, it's unusable as well, because when I jump, I clench my hands and turn the camera off. Well, let's go again, Jason. I'm not doing it again, man. I'm not doing it again. I'm not going up. I'm not going up again. I'm not doing it. I'm not going up. We really made ourselves at home at the fair, and we had a lot of fun. I like the livestock barns to a degree. I like the midway rides, but they don't like me. I like the cooking shows when the cooks are through. I like the pioneers and petting fuzzy ears. Bread pudding is one of 21 new food contests at the fair this year, and my bosses are either rewarding me or torturing me by sending me here to cover it because I love bread pudding, and there were some mouth-watering entries. Nicole, what are you looking for in a bread pudding? Um, well, what I'm looking for, there's kind of two different types. There's a sweet and then a savory. Our entries today were all sweet, um, but I'm looking for a combination of textures, multiple textures within the same dish, um, as well as the presentation is always important, how it looks is, you know, we eat with our eyes, so that's important first off. Um, the texture and then the taste, the most important thing. So just how all the flavors co-mingle together and support the dish as a whole. Very unique use of um, mini donuts. I think everybody that likes bread pudding has, especially the older ones, have grown up with a grandparent, grandmother that has made bread pudding because, you know, back in the Depression days, if you had bread and you had some milk and some eggs, you had it made. It's almost like a uh, French toast, like French toast on steroids. I was talking to somebody yesterday. I used my grandma's bread pudding, and they like to use their mom's bread pudding that they've now added different things to it, like grand raisins or different kinds of raisins. Mom always made it out of uh, the cinnamon rolls, and my grandma just made hers from putting the stale bread out letting it be there and adding enough cinnamon and clove to it. So it's just whatever you need. And then whether or not you like to put milk on it or not or put honey over it, that's what my dad would do. Uh, first place is Diane Rue. This one was the best flavored one. It was fluffy yet moist. Just a good old fashioned bread pudding. Diane, blue ribbon bread pudding, the first time that this has been a division here at the fair. What's it like to win? Oh, it's great. My family loves bread pudding, so I have made this uh, quite a lot. You said you were up pretty late last night. I was, 2 o'clock in the morning, but uh, I'm glad it all turned out all right. And what's the secret? Um, I think the secret is cream, full cream. No, no half and half, no 2%, it's full cream. Do you have any advice for anyone uh, who's maybe thinking about entering? I would say do it, you know, just try a few. There is a beginner's class here at the fair, and so you would just be competing against other beginners, you know, first timers, but, um, you know, don't be afraid to kind of get out of your comfort zone. You know, try maybe ingredients that you don't normally use because judges are looking for that, something that's a little different. Well, you've made history today. The first <laughs> blue ribbon in bread pudding. <laughs> Great, thank you. I can't wait to have some. <laughs> What is it that draws people? I've heard fair administrators say it's, it's the noise of the chainsaw that draws people in there curious of what's going on. 
and then they're intrigued with the process. The wood smells good. Hopefully they're impressed that we take a log and turn it into a sculpture in a relatively short period of time. A lot of people want to own a carving at the end of the fair. I've been carving for 21 years. I had always admired sculpture and, and art, but I haven't had an art class since junior high. Uh, but all my life I'd look at sculpture and I'd say, what's the big deal? I, I think I could do that. Then 20 years ago, a friend of mine saw the chainsaw carving done here at the Iowa State Fair. I had never seen it done. They were telling me about it. And I said, you know, I think I could do that. And they essentially laughed at me and said, well, we have a log in our yard. Why don't you bring your chainsaw over and carve something? And so I did. It was slow, crude, rough, but I was intrigued with the process. I started playing around with it on weekends and it started taking off. You can get a little bit of adrenaline from the crowd that get that energy. I love the rock and roll. It, it helps inspire me. I almost always have the music on when I'm carving. Once I put on the gear and turn up my rock and roll, I'm, I'm in my zone and I just go. With a good sized log, there's many different things we could make out of it. So we, we have in mind to make, say, a hummingbird. And so we choose a log that fits that well. Uh, I think the hummingbird looks better, more graceful with a, a longer, thinner log rather than a real wide log. It looks more delicate. With, say, a bovine, it's longer than it is tall, so we have to downsize it to fit the log. Most people are intrigued and impressed with what we do, uh, curious to watch the process. Virtually every fair, there is uh, that situation where we inspire somebody to try it and they, they play around with it on weekends just like I used to do. I think it's great. You know, I, there's no such thing as too much art. Everybody has their own interest and ability, and uh, that's what makes one of the things that makes the world go round. If you can't make it to the fair this year, or you just want another taste of that enchanting fairground atmosphere, here's a chance to feel as if you were there at the fair. Well, we've come to the close of this hour of Fair Highlights, but we're far from done. There are three more nights of coverage coming your way. But I get it. 
It's State Fair Week, and we all want a little more. So I have a solution for you. You can check out our website and our YouTube channel, as well as our Facebook and Instagram pages to get your daily dose of State Fair fun. There are several ways you can engage with us about our beloved State Fair anytime, anywhere. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow for more action at the fair, like the micro mini tractor pull, the mouth-watering cookout contest, and our friend Charity Nebby hits the thrill zone. Hey, thanks for sharing in the electric state fair energy with us. Until next time, I'm Bill Riley, hoping you had fun at the fair. Funding for FAIR 2021 is brought to you by Friends, the Iowa PBS Foundation, and by... At EMC, we're committed to improving the communities we serve and the schools within them by donating our time, money, and resources, and by supporting the education of those pursuing a career in the insurance industry. Count on EMC. I am Kevin Rasmussen, and I am a pig farmer. We feel a deep responsibility to protect our environment and ensure sustainability. I think it's important to share our story and that others know that we're always striving to do better. Investing in a College Savings Iowa 529 account can give your future scholars financial support to pursue their educational dreams. They grow up fast. Learn more about planning for their tomorrow at collegesavingsiowa.com.